So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining again for Trace Coffee Conversations. I'm really excited. It took some time to like nail her down. She's amazing and she's super busy. Um, Lindsay Lord. So Lindsay Lord is joining us today. I'm really excited. Lindsay and I met a lifetime ago, like 15 years, I don't even know, like a very long time ago when we both worked together at the Indianapolis Museum of Art. Um, again, long time ago, pre-drama of now. And um, not that it wasn't there, it just wasn't yeah. there. So um, she is now at the Arts Council. So Lindsay is the director, I want to get it right, so I'm going to read it, Director of Artist Services and Director of Gallery 924 at the Arts Council of Indianapolis. And I love that place. You know me, I'm a, I love Gallery 924. So I am really excited for you to take the time to share with us. Um, to share your story, um, and to share a little bit more about the Arts Council. So, Lindsay, thanks so much for joining. Oh, thanks for having me, and thanks for being one of uh, one of the gallery's best patrons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I buy little things, but I buy them regularly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd like to say, um, so Lindsay's referring to specifically, they do a tiny show every year, um, and I call it a gateway drug to Indianapolis artists, because you can buy things from amazing artists, um, smaller, but that you may not be able to afford big stuff. So I have like a tiny gallery wall and I had been taking Henry since he was in my belly. So every year Henry picks out a new piece of art. And so he is a young, tiny arts collector. And one day I'll show you his room because it's like a gallery wall of a little Indianapolis artist. So yep. fan. that's exactly, remember y'all not big pieces yet. Yes. Goal. <laughs> and that's exactly you, you got it exactly right that's exactly what we want that show to be um uh you know a gateway drug for for collecting yeah so you're you're living the story we wanted to tell <laughs> it's my favorite so Linz, tell everybody what do you do because you're a mom you are in charge of a gallery what do you do yeah oh gosh um well as you said director of artist services and gallery 924 and really really truly truly took over that role in October of last year uh, when my mentor and predecessor um, moved on after 19 years and so um, you know the artist services department at the Indie Arts Council is just meant to help artists local artists in central Indiana thrive we want to connect them with opportunities to um, you know make a mural to perform at a venue to uh, boost their professional skills to become better at business, you know, just to become well rounded artists and, and thrive in this in this community. I we love want them that to so much. Stay in Indy, yeah. yeah, we want them to stay in Indy for sure. Yes. How, okay, so I had mentioned and granted you've been at the Arts Council for quite some time, but how'd you get there? Yeah, well, I uh, started my career in the arts, as you said, at the uh, Indianapolis Art Museum and was a registrar for exhibitions uh, and worked with the contemporary department. So I was working with uh, living artists who were coming to the museum to install shows. Um, and then when I moved on from the museum, it was like, what's, you know, how can I still work with living artists? That was my, that's my jam. My Mom was an interior designer. My dad was an artist. It's like, I speak artist. Um, these are my people. How can I, how can I continue to work with them? <laughs> um, and so started at the, uh, at the Indie Arts Council at the front desk. I, I came in, I put my resume on the, on the front desk and they called me the next day. Um, they really liked, you know, that I had experience with, with working with artists, with installing shows in galleries and, um, it just grew from there, not, that was, gosh, that was 2011, and uh, they had just secured a program, the Super Bowl was coming to town, and they were doing a public art program that was the 46 for 46 mural program, and um, took a chance and said, why don't you manage this, um, this public art program, so my, my duties at the Arts Council just grew from grew from there, just took on more and more, um, worked, as I said, under my predecessor and learned a lot about, about the business of, of helping artists. And um, yeah, here I am. <laughs> okay. So speaking of opportunities for artists, because there's obviously many, and you've been there for some time, what have been a couple of your favorites that really you, 
you know, that just ring in your head every time and make you smile every time you think of them? What have been a couple of your favorites in Indy? Oh, gosh. Um, That's such a good question. I spoke Um, that wasn't on the list. I know. Um, well, you know, like I said, the, the 46 for 46 mural program was, was incredibly exciting. It, it, it left a huge mark on the city, um, that's still here today, 10 years later. And, um, it's just uh, what makes me the most happy is the relationship building that I get to do with artists. I mean, it's, we're like a tiny, <laughs> cause the art world is tiny and indie. it's, we're like a, we're like a family and, um, you get to make connections for artists. You get to, you know, there's a organization that'll reach out and they'll say, we're looking for an artist who works with rubber duckies. And it's like, well, I know, I know this guy I met, you know, six months ago is a rubber ducky artist. I get to, you know, I get to make that connection. <laughs> so, um, but man, I mean, the art, we've had so many great programs. There's been the art and seek program, um, putting small artworks around communities for people to go out and find um, the high art billboard program, putting artwork on billboards around the city. It's just, it's just so exciting to, to, um, you know, get local art out in front of people that maybe don't seek out a gallery on a regular basis or don't, don't always get to the arts like they should. (laughs) So what's something that they could see, what's something going on right now that they could go see? Um, the high art billboard program is up right now. We have a new round of artists that just got, just got announced. Um, There's always one on my street. I love it. Yay. Good. Good. Um, and those move around central yeah. Indiana, which is really exciting. Um, so you can, you can see one one day and then the next day it'll be somewhere else. So, um, other things, other things, um, there's just so much. Um, no, I love it. And I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I get yeah. really so um, we've got um, we've got a show in the gallery right now that cool. is um, a photography show where we've partnered with a local uh, photography group called Aurora uh, Aurora Photography and they just did um, curated a show that's about uh, work that was created in the midst of the pandemic. You know what what kind of work was coming out of photographers um, yeah. during the pandemic. Not that it's over, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's such a great. Idea. I love all of that. And, and again, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I know I love art. And again, started out here in the, at the IMA. So um, I get very excited and want to ask all the questions. So let's go from there. So speaking of pandemic that we're in and being in the arts community, obviously some art has come out of that, but where, and as always, we're going to bookend it. So where have you seen you or artists have struggle? And then where are you finding some joy, some delight? Yeah. um, When the pandemic started, um, the Arts Council, like we sprang into action. We knew that artists were going to lose, you know, they were going to lose commissions. They were going to lose shows. You know, musicians were hit so incredibly hard. And we sprang into action. We worked with funders and we created a, um, uh, a restart or sorry, a relief fund. Um, to get artists grants to just survive, essentially, you know, if you need money for bills or medical, you know, anything, we got them, um, we got them grants to get through it. And to do that kind of work in the midst of everything that was happening was so important for me to just, (laughs) to be able to get through it. Um, And uh, we have a new grant as well. So to be able to do something like that in the midst of complete turmoil gave me uh, something to focus on to be able to help people just meant just meant so much. And um, that grant program has evolved and we are now doing um, mental health grants. So Mm -hmm. getting yes, and that actually will launch uh, really soon. We have another round of those mental health grants launching really soon. So it's um, either $250 or $750 to, um, go see a therapist to, yeah. to, um, have a yoga practice, just anything around, uh, mental health and wellness, this, this money can go towards. So, um, because artists, artists are 
well-rounded people too. They need, you know, they need money for supplies, but they need money for healthcare too. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lindsay, that's amazing. And what the Arts Council is doing, it's, I mean, it's just absolutely tremendous. So um, what can our community now, like what do you need? What is, what do the arts community need? And again, we're talking living artists. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to show up? Yeah. Um, literally showing up, <laughs> you know, go see a show, go to a gallery, um, you know, buy local, buy local art. Um, and, you know, if you are, um, if you're with a company that is, you know, thinking about incorporating art or a creative in some way, uh, I like to stress that people should do that from the beginning. Um, oftentimes artists are uh, an afterthought. Yeah. Um, you know, you can get all the way down the road on a, on a project or a program and uh, think, oh, we should, we should include an artist. But if you do that from the beginning, um, artists have such a unique way of looking at the world, uh, which yeah. is why we love them. And so including an artist from the start will be, will always be fruitful. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And tell people specifically for Gallery 924, mm -hmm. how often do shows change? Because I think mm -hmm. that's a question people are always like, I kind of want to go to a show. I don't, I don't know where to go. I don't know what's happening. How often do shows change for you? Sure. We have, it's, it has switched up a little bit this year. We have uh, seven shows a year. Um, <clears throat> we are experimenting with we used to have a show every month, uh, and so a different opening every first Friday. Um, but uh, we're experimenting with having shows run a little bit longer. So we're doing a show about every month and a half. Okay. And um, we have a couple solo shows this year. We have uh, shows that are related to some of our grant programs. So we have a Creative Renewal Arts Fellowship uh, exhibition, and then we also have a Dahan Artist of Distinction exhibition. Um, and so those will um, feature, feature uh, artists who have received that funding. Um, and the, both of those programs are so exciting. Their uh, creative renewal is for someone who's been uh, an artist for some time. They get to have $10,000 to do anything they need to feel a creative refresh, um, which is, you know, some artists have traveled and found their family roots. Some artists have created a cookbook, just anything you need to feel, um, to feel a renewal and, a, and to reignite your passion for your art. Um, and then the Dahan Artist of Distinction Award is, is also $10,000 for artists to um, kind of kick, kick that next uh, level of their career into gear and um, kind of experiment and and do something that maybe they couldn't do because they didn't have the didn't have the funding that's amazing that's yeah. amazing and so i'm going to link the web stuff yeah. oh yes please come and find i absolutely will um okay so let's get to the last question and this is all about you okay how do you want to leave your tricks <laughs> that is such a hard question for me as as someone who is um I don't know. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm an introverted extrovert, <laughs> you know? Um, so, you know, leaving a trace for me indicates that there were, there will be some evidence that you were there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think for me personally, the joy in my job has been, um, making a connection for artists with opportunities. Um, there's so much, there's so much beauty in an artist's mind and to be able to, um, to be able, like I said, to be able to connect them with an opportunity and watch them just blow it out of the water is, is just so satisfying. And, you know, I'm, I'm a visual artist myself. And so I, I can, I can visualize an outcome. That's a skill that I've developed, but, um, you know, nine times out of 10, an artist will take something and run with it and create something that is just so exciting. And to be a part of, um, making that link is my favorite. It's my favorite. That thing. is legacy that they carry that with them. Yeah. 
ever of what you've done for them. So it's a really beautiful thing, what you do, what the Arts Council does, and, and the joy that you all find in just lifting artists up and giving them that support. And it's insanely beautiful. Um, and it's incredibly important. And I'm so grateful for your time. And I'm so grateful for the work that you do in our city to make it exciting and vibrant and beautiful. And thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Jillian. You are a wonderful presence in our city and so grateful for your passion and your, your joy is, is tremendous. So thank you. It's all, wrapped, it's all wrapped up in you guys. So I just adore. So thank you so much. Thank you. Great day. All right.